Okay, so what we have here is the Ravel Apollo Lunar Spacecraft Model Kit. This is a repackaged version of the 1967 kit commemorating the 25th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. I picked this up uh, at a really good price online. If you were to get the new, I mean, were to get the original 1967 kit unopened or, um, you know, unbuilt, it would be um, pretty expensive, right at or above $100, I think. I've seen, I've seen a couple of them that are at the $200 price um, um, in their original box um, unopened. So it can be an expensive kit. So I got this one because I'm not going to save the box. I'm going to build it. Um, built this as a kid back in 67, and I really liked it. I like the fact that the LEM has retractable landing gear, so you can display it nested in the uh, lunar module adapter, or you can display it in the, uh, or on the lunar surface diorama that comes with it. Um, the fact that it's over 20 inches tall makes it a really nice, uh, nice size. It's a good display piece. But the thing that disappointed me about it was the fact that it didn't have a BPC, or blast protective cover. The launch escape tower simply attached to the command module. And I knew that wasn't correct, so you just had to kind of live with it. You either sprayed the command module white, or you painted it silver and just stuck the, um, the launch escape tower on it. Either way, it, it wasn't really authentic looking, and that was always a disappointment. Um, so now we segue to today, where we have 3D printed parts for just about every model kit out there, especially the space model kits. And so I found a company called Shapeways, right here, that makes a lot of 3D printed parts for lots of different models, including this one. Uh, this particular 148 scale kit, uh, according to Michael from Shapeways, is a little bit larger than true 148 scale, so they had to design a 3D part specifically for this kit. So if you were to order it, it's called the um, Apollo BPC-48 Revell Kit, is how it's identified. And it runs about uh, $55 uh, for the kit. Well worth it. Um, if, if the pictures um, prove to be what the actual parts look like, it's going to really be pretty cool. So anyhow, I'm going to pop this open. I want to extract the command module. Like I said, this kit was uh, previously opened. Somebody put parts in the bag, and I'm making the assumption that they're all there. Hopefully they are. Um, I did a cursory check and it looked like most everything was there, so. And if not, I'm sure I can find those parts online. Not too worried about it. So I'm gonna take out the parts in question here that will involve the 3D, 3D printed part. Put this over here, over here. I'll set these up here. Okay, so uh, this is the Shapeways box. Looks like it's been opened before. The mail has, uh, looks like the mail um, possibly opened this box for some reason, not sure why. And this will be my first experience with a 3D printed part, so um, not, not familiar with it. So we got peanuts, packing material, packing lists. Okay, nice um, Ziploc poly bag. Parts are in there. Got their logo on it. Let's check this out. Solid rocket motor. Nose cone. BPC. Nice detail. You'll have to do some sanding on here to remove these printing lines um, that are visible on here, but that shouldn't be any problem at all. No flashing of any kind, of course, because it's not a molded kit um, or a vacuum-formed kit. Nice. Launch escape tower looks really nice. Really nice detail. Has, a, has an interesting texture to it. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. Not a heavy texture. It doesn't, it's not going to require a lot of sanding, but it has a little bit of a texture to it. Okay. So it looks like this tower has a bit of an offset here. I'm going to assume that the long end goes in the holes. Like so. Okay. 
like such. Yeah, like that. And then the solid rocket motor, it fits on there nicely. And then this here would fit right on top of there. Cool. That looks really nice. So, this whole configuration would fit over the top of the command module. And the heat shield, snap it off the parts tree here. Okay. Let's take a look and see how that how that would fit in here. So the hatches would be the alignment point, just like that, and it would fit right in there. Wow, it fits right in there perfect, just like that. Cool. So the heat shield attaches to here, like it normally would. It's got some little um, alignment keys in here as to how, they, how it aligns up. Fits in there like that. Hatches line up and the whole part would fit in here, something like this. And then this would attach to the top of the uh, C uh, CSM bulkhead, just like that. So that fits on there really nice. It's going to be a good fit. I'll set that aside. I don't want those little pins to break. <clears throat> so there it is, over the top. That's going to be great. I'll put that together one more time just so you can take a look at it in its entirety. Very nice looking uh, piece. Pretty impressed. Again, my first look at a 3D printed part and uh, it's pretty neat. I'm sure there's um, techniques to uh, gluing as far as using different types of glue, what glue works best on these things. I'll have to do a little research on that. But yeah, that's a nice looking part. And that sitting on top of a, you know, of the stack is gonna look great. It'll look very authentic, and that's kind of what I was shooting for. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm going to um, purchase additional aftermarket parts to update this kit to make it look more realistic. Um, I don't know if the uh, service module um, is the um, block, block one or block two variety. I haven't looked at it. Um, there's a bunch of other things you can purchase to update these, and I'm not sure how far I want to go with that. <clears throat> You know, the, the LEM, of course, you can get really detailed with that, and you can take months just building it if you want to spend that kind of time on it. I don't know that I want to do that. You know, I'm going to build a really great-looking kit, as I usually do. It's going to look great, um, but I'm not a rivet counter kind of guy, so I'm not going to get into all that super fine detail. Um, there's a lot of guys that do that, and that's awesome. Um, and it's not that I don't have the patience for it. It's just that <clears throat> I have some other kits that I want to build, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time building just one kit. I want to build the kit, build it really nice, um, make it look great, and move on to the next one. Um, so, there it is, the Shapeways Ravel 48. Again, 55 bucks, more than what I paid for this um, Ravel kit in, in its entirety, but well worth it because it's going to really authenticate that um, that model kit and make it look that much better. So I will probably uh, continue to um, produce some videos during the build uh, just to show you how it's all coming together. So thanks for watching.